How's it going, everyone? Tim here, TRD Adventures. Hope everyone's all in well out there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. So we've had, you know, a little break with some videos and stuff like that, you know, just newborn at home. So sometimes, you know, this videos and stuff, that's second nature. Plenty of other stuff going on at the house to do stuff like that. But finally getting back on track with some videos and finally able to get my hands on an SCX-10 Pro Kit from Axial. Had some issues with my order and getting it the truck to me and everything else but luckily my man vincent coast to coast crawlers had an extra one and i was able to get it from him and get it my way so i can finally, finally get my hands on one and go ahead and get one built and everything all nice and simple now the kit has been available to the public now for a few weeks now so there's already plenty of build videos and stuff like that on there and honestly going through the instructions and building it i did not feel the need for a build video because the instructions are pretty straight simple i had no questions no problems everything went together Super, super smooth. So what is Axel giving us? Axel has given us a very awesome LCG, you know, scale comp capable truck in a box. It has everything you need to put the truck together, get your electronics, wheels, and tires, stuff like that. But it is all the parts that we would typically build up from the ground up if we're doing any of our other builds. You know, we have to source all those parts, you know, get your axles, links, chassis, all the components and stuff like that. Axel put it all in a box for us and ready to go. And it's not just something they slap together. It has been put through its paces. It has been tested and driven at major national events throughout the country over the last year. Not just driving at those events, doing well, podiuming at many events and winning some of those events. Now, granted, Wyatt is an amazing driver. I'm honestly sure he could drive a shoebox to a podium. He is a very, very skilled and talented driver. But nonetheless, that shows that this truck, this chassis, this platform, is that capable it can do those things so that is very very awesome to see it's not just something that you have to change a whole lot of things it's it's there you just got to drive it and tune it to your nature and it's there it is it is ready to rock and roll now one of the big things that i saw a lot of people talk about and maybe weren't necessarily happy with was you know is is value they're like i think i think the truck just costs too much for what it is for just a kit no body none of that stuff it's 429 dollars. yeah it is but it's still worth it. So for example, let's just, let's talk about the value. That $429, you get minus electronics, wheels, tires, and a body. Like you get this, everything here you get for $429. So just for example, we'll just use some generic ballpark prices. If you were to start a ground up build, something similar in the class two to class three category, you get some aftermarket rails. You're looking $80. You know, these are very, very nice and well done axles. So if you were to get axles similar, axles comparable to what they have, my best guess is something around like the SSD diamond, something like that. You're gonna be looking about $150 to $175 for the axles. Shocks, you're looking about $90 for comparable performance scale shocks like these are. Links, another $70 for some good, you know, stainless or high clearance links or custom links that you would get to fit whatever chassis you're using. Then transmission or T case and Ford motor mount. So if you were to get something that gets those scale points, gets you Ford motor mount and transfer case points, you're looking about 150 bucks. And then drive shafts, it comes with your standard two drive shafts and a prop shaft for the Ford motor mount to the T case. So if you were to source those out, again, this is probably on the lower side, you're looking about $70. Most likely you're looking closer to 100 though. Just those base components right there, that value building from the ground up, you're looking about $635. So right there, $635 versus the $429 that the pro cost. In addition to those components, when you're also building from the ground up, you need other things. You most likely need a skid that's made for whatever chassis you're using. You will need chassis braces for whatever chassis you're using. Most likely a dual servo mount or an axle mount servo option, if that's your thing, and body mount. So all those things, if you were to source those separately, again, there's another $50 to $100 easily in those components. And again, that all comes with the pro kit because the pro kit does come with a standard you know, dual servo chassis mounted setup. But in addition to that, it also in the box has an axle mounted servo option if in case you wanna run axle mounted servo along with all the body posts and a wide variety of body posts it does come with. So definitely plenty of body mounting options comes with this truck in the box. Value I think is definitely there. Even if you were to just to buy this kit as a donor into another chassis, the value's there. Even if you had all the kit and then swapped out the chassis rails and maybe a few other components, I think the value is still there and puts you very well comparable into the ballpark range of building from the ground up. I'm not saying don't build ground up because we're all going to. I still like sourcing all the components and everything else like that. That's part of it that I enjoy. 
But for those that aren't familiar with that or just don't like the hassle of sourcing, Okay, here's my axles here. Okay, here's my chassis. Here's my links for that chassis. Here's the servo mounts for that chassis. All that stuff. If someone just is unfamiliar with that, doesn't like the hassle, it's all in a box. So to me, that's a huge win in axles part. All in all, like I was saying, assembling everything there went together really, really smooth. The instructions were pretty well spot on. Um, I was able to understand everything where everything went and had no issues. Everything went together good. The axles went together good. And the shocks, as much as I dislike assembling shocks, these went together really, really well. And even just here on the bench right now, they feel really good. I think these shocks are going to work really well. I would like to see, um, which I bet we probably will, see some different spring rate options from Axel for these shocks. Or I didn't even think to try when I was assembling to see if any of the Lozy Mini T-Spring shocks would fit. I'm sure with a little modification, they would fit as well. Um, so I may try that later on, actually. But just in general, the shocks overall, I think they feel great. And Axel has already also released a whole little product line of support for this chassis. They will have a carbon fiber chassis option. The chassis does, um, the chassis in the kit is aluminum. So they do have a carbon fiber option coming. That is just a simple stock replacement chassis, but it's in carbon fiber. So there's some weight savings. You're also seeing some different uh, components for the axles, like knuckles, different tubes, whether it be aluminum or brass, knuckles, stuff like that. But those parts aren't available yet, but these are AR45 Pro axles. So they are AR45 straight axle based. So for the most part, a lot of your, your AR45 parts, like your axle shafts, stuff like that will fit. So, like, for example, when I was putting my axles together, I went ahead and grabbed a set of the SSD brass knuckles for the AR45 straight axles. You know, just to give it a little more weight in the front. If you are putting together or looking for stuff like that, or maybe want a little more weight in the front, AR45 straight axle knuckles fit just fine. And there are a wide variety of them out there that are available to the public. One other modification I did here when I was assembling was actually to the Ford motor mount. And if we can see right here, the motor mount right here, I dremeled this away. I'm using a Outrunner motor. I'm using the Three Brothers OSC Black Jacket. And this motor plate here normally just comes up like this. So it doesn't, it's not flush. So if you were to tighten your wires and stuff at the top, there's not a whole lot of room for your motor wires to come through. Now, if you flip the motor around in front of the wires on the bottom, just fine, not a problem but I wanted my wires on the top so I could route it along with the transmission and the standoff. So I just simply dremeled this little front area off for the motor to go through and everything there fit just fine. So then I have overall more adjustment and placement for the motor and its wires. So nothing crazy. It's not changing the integrity of that motor mount or anything like that. It's pretty stout. So not worried about any breakage or any extra stress or anything like that right there. Just dremeled off just a little bit. And you can actually see right there just how much I dremeled off. So it comes across all right there, and I just simply dremeled it flat to where the motor face is. One feature this transmission have is it does have a selectable overdrive. It has a 0% overdrive option and like a 42 or 46, 40-ish overdrive option. So then it does have a servo on there, so you can put a micro servo back there and actually work your overdrive 0 or 40%. But it also does have a mechanical lockout, and that is what I chose because with the new rectangle rules out there, Selectable overdrive is only allowed in class three. It has to be, so if you have it in class one or class two, it has to be mechanically locked out. So I went ahead and just locked mine in 40% because honestly, that's probably where it's going to be most of the time. I don't see myself necessarily trailing with this because I have other trail trucks. So 40% is going to do me just fine. But again, that is a really cool feature to have here because you may have people that just want to get in this world build and they may just like to trail with it or do something. So they may not want the 40% overdrive, so they can go to 0% or vice versa. Some people just like high overdrive. So again, just a little bit of everything. If you like overdrive or don't like overdrive, it has options for either. So definitely a win there. The overall profile here and everything, everything kind of comes down nice, good. Everything's smooth. The sliders, I do like the design of the sliders here, how it's not like flush here with the bottom of like the skid. It comes up a little bit. So again, gives you this little bit here um, as far as clearance. What well, we are talking about, you know, the skid area. So this chassis here does have an angle skid. It's 3.5 degrees. So nothing super crazy, but it does have some angle in it, which if you are in the scale comping side, an angled skid that makes this chassis class two or class three eligible. It is not class one eligible because class one has to have a flat skid, but have no fear. If you are wanting this or looking to run this in class one, because that has been a big question if it's class one legal because of the angle on the skid, it is not. Like I said, have no fear. Brazen Scale RC 
has announced and they have actually released their Oracle chassis, which is specifically for the SCX10 Pro. It's available in aluminum, G10, and carbon fiber. And it is a direct replacement. So simply, if you already have one assembled, you unbolt your rails and bolt in the brazen rails. If you are building a kit and already have the rails, whenever you start assembling the rails, instead of using the rails that the kit comes with, you simply put the brazen rails in its place. With that option, it, it the Oracle does have a flat skid. So that then does make it a class legal chassis. So if you are looking to pick this up or another one and want to do a class one build with it, there is an option. It is out there. And the chassis price credit, I think it was $65 for carbon fiber. So super awesome. And again, it is direct compatible with all of the chassis components. So there's no extra drilling. There's no moving this around, moving that around. It directly replaces the aluminum rails that it comes with. Even though I may not be doing class one with it, I will be getting those rails here for this truck as well. I will be, I'll probably do a couple weekends here in just its overall stock platform. And then I will swap it over to the brazen chassis or a few other you know, improvements and small changes with the chassis. Um, and we'll go over more of those when we get the chassis here and do that swap. Uh, just so the knowledge is out there, there is a class one chassis option out there for this truck without having to swap anything over. So again, right there, if you're looking to build a class one, you get a brazen chassis for $65 and you get the pro kit for $429. So just, just under $500, you have a class one chassis ready to rock and roll, get your wheels, tires, bumpers, and you're set and in class one and ready to rock and roll. Overall, again, extremely, extremely excited about this truck. The build, everything was good. It was actually a very nice and soothing build. Um, like I said, everything went together very smoothly and the instructions were easy to follow along. Just love everything. The quality, all the parts, the chassis, the pan heart, all that stuff. Everything is really, really good. The rod ends and everything feel real good. As far as the links go, the quality and the high clearance. Like I said, it is, you have straight here in the front and then high clearance in the rear, which that's really good because when you're on, you have a nice transition point here in the front to the skid. And then when you're breaking over, you have that extra clearance. So you can just follow the break over and carry on your way. Now into the details of my build here. Uh, so nothing really changed as far as the actual pro kit minus the SSD knuckles. So as far as electronics here, um, we are running a three builders RC black jacket. Um, 2000 kV, which is the censored outrunner, and we're pairing that with a Mamba Micro X2 ESC. And then up here in the front for steering, we're using the Three Brothers RC G13 Pro Servo. We'll have no issues turning any wheels and tires or moving anything out of my way with that servo. And then here for the servo winch, I do have a Reefs 300 um, IS uh, comp spec winch in here. Um, the kiddo uses them in his truck, and they're light, compact internal spool, which is something that I prefer. And they have a good amount of speed with them. So um, they work great for him. So for right now, this is going to do just fine in this truck here. Moving on down here for wheels and tires. I just happened to have a late night and I was scrolling through uh, the pages when Vanquish, when Vanquish dropped the uh, 2.2 KMC tank wheels in pink. Uh, so I went ahead and got a set and they look really good. So again, these are 2.2 wheels. And for tires, I have my favorite J Concepts Tusk tire in the 1.9 4.75. So 1.9 tire stretch on 2.2s. It's not bad. These, everything went together really, really smooth there. So definitely really excited to uh, get it out and everything else like that. Oh, one more thing um, for the motor. So the kit does come with a pinion. It comes with a 13 tooth pinion, uh, but I changed it out for mine with the black jacket and the 2000 KV. Um, I'm actually running a nine tooth pinion. I like smooth and all the controls. So I dropped my pinion down a little bit. The motor has more than enough power to make up for it because this truck will be um, on 4S. Servo, motor, ESC, it can all handle 4S. So that's what it's going to be on. I actually have had this body ordered and ready to rock and roll for this for a while, but we have the new uh, Proline Bug Body. This is their 12.3 inch wheelbase crawler, and I got it on here. And then, you know, just did a little minor trimming, got everything to fit really nice. Uh, I initially had everything painted and mounted, and I had the rear uh, fenders and everything, but I ended up taking them completely off, and then I cut quite a bit off the bottom here. And the front, um, not sure if I'm going to keep it this way or just go ahead and take the fenders all the way off, but I did a very um, aggressive and open cut there um, in the front get everything down low and I did also I did trim some of the slider um, out just I don't need that much slider so I cut some of the slider out of my way and I'm still using these stock bumpers here um, they're nice they're low profile bumpers and they should slide everything nice and easy so we're going to rock them on there for a little bit but overall I think everything came out pretty good there um, did almost kind of split the paint between a black and silver and then got a little crazy with some decals and everything. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. 
I'm definitely excited to get it out this weekend and get some runs. So that will be in our next video. We'll get some running footage and do some more talking. And then probably here in the next week or so, we will go ahead and get the Brazen Oracle chassis and get it swapped over and installed. So any comments, questions, anything like that, as always, put them down below. Do my best to get everything answered. Again, sorry it's been a little bit in between videos, but I'm going to try to get some going, get some back on track. I do have a few lined up. Um, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, everyone, have a great one. Crawl on.